every four years here in these United States of America, we vote on who is going to be the next president. It is 2024. Here in just a few short months, and these months will fly by. Before we know it, it will be November. And you and I will be going to our precincts to vote on who is going to be the president of the United States of America over the course of the next four years. In today's episode, Reed Cooley and I are going to be talking and discussing on the importance of voting, and not just the importance of voting, but especially who God and country is going to be pushing over the next several months. Reed, here on my table, I have some sand. And Reed, this sand was given to me by a good friend of mine named Chris Lambert. He's in the United States Marine Corps. And he was over at Iwo Jima. And while he was at Iwo Jima, he brought me some sand from Iwo Jima. Many of us know our history, and we know that Iwo Jima played a major part in the World War II. And we know from studying history that we lost thousands of Marines there at Iwo Jima. My wife's grandpa was on the USS Annapolis, and the USS Annapolis was actually sitting off of the coast of Iwo Jima, and it was sending in uh, air support for these Marines as these Marines were evading Iwo Jima, which was very, very important uh, in that in that war um, during that time. Read, as I hold sand from Iwo Jima, this black sand, as I hold this sand, I am reminded of just how important it is, number one, to vote, but secondly, on the price that was paid so that I would have the opportunity to go and vote. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage you, I want to encourage every single one of you to make sure that you don't just go vote, but you bring your friends and you bring your family, you bring them with you to go vote. And then you don't just vote and you don't just bring your friends and family to go vote with you, but you are an informed voter. So many people go to the voting box and they just vote for the first person on the ballot or the name that they recognize. They're not even informed. So that's what we want to talk a little bit about today, about informing you, but also encouraging you to get out and vote. And read this past weekend, the Libertarian Party made a huge announcement. I mean, they put out their nominee for president here in November. So read, let's just jump right into that, talking about uh, this person uh, that the Libertarian Party has nominated to be their president or to be their spokesperson for their party. Uh, well, Dan, uh, thank you again. Uh, look, the Libertarian Party uh, is a national disgrace. I think that uh, they have forever betrayed uh, the American people. No liberty-minded, freedom-minded, or conservative uh, person should ever trust uh, the Libertarian Party again with a position as small as dog catcher, uh, certainly not with the President of the United States. Uh, so um, they just nominated a fellow named Chase Oliver, uh, a man from over in Georgia, uh, to be their presidential nominee. And he is by far the most far-left nominee of any party in this presidential election cycle. Uh, this person is so pro-choice uh, that he has said on the record numerous times that if he were in the U.S. Senate, he would sponsor legislation to codify Roe versus Wade. Wow. Uh, this is a person who supports abortion all the way up until the point that, 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 the, that the baby has been, you know, that has left the mother's body. Wow. Uh, this is a person who has open borders. Uh, he has said numerous times that he has open borders. Uh, he says that there wouldn't be people dying in 18 wheelers uh, if we were just open borders. We need to open the borders because um, open borders is the only fair and just immigration plan. That's his whole idea. Uh, he's in favor of drag queens and drag queen story hours. So this is a person who's gone on the record numerous times uh, to defend you know grown men in thongs dancing in front of, of little children. Drag queen story hours, what they call it, drag clowns, wow. men, let's call them what they are, men dressed up as women, going into public schools, going into libraries in many cases, dancing in front of little kids in order to groom them and basically turn them gay. That's what Drag Queen Story Hour is all about. We had that, that fantastic episode uh, several weeks back on the origin of Drag Queen Story Hour and what its purposes are uh, in sort of an academic context. But when it comes down to it in real world terms, all of Drag Queen Story Hour is about taking kids who would otherwise be straight and trying to turn them gay or lesbian or trans, it's recruiting uh, the so-called LGBTQ you know, alphabet community, right? This is a person who's, who's completely and totally in favor of grooming children, uh, doesn't see anything wrong with Drag Queen Story Hour, or, or at least uh, he claims to. Uh, like I said, I mean, this guy's a complete and total disgrace. Uh, the Libertarian Party is a complete and total disaster. 
Um, and I will say a little bit, not to gloat, although some friends have called me over the last couple of days and told me that I should gloat. But uh, whenever I was still you know, trying to work from within that party to bring it into a more conservative, friendly direction, I told them. I told the, the Libertarian National Committee Board on the record in February 2023, I said that if you don't start embracing some conservative messaging that is going to have the natural effect of alienating the Chase Olivers of the world, you're going to wind up with somebody like Chase Oliver. You're going to wind up with Chase Oliver as your nominee, and his base is going to take control. And then you're, gonna, you're going to become the furthest left political party in this country, which is what they've done. Uh, so they're, for, they're further to the left than the Democrat Party. At this point, they are. The and Libertarian I'm, Party is further to the left than the Democrats. Yeah, and so when you look at the Libertarian Party, you know, I, whenever I think Libertarian, you know, one of the first men that come to my mind is Rand Paul. And right. I, think, I think of Rand Paul. And I know, I mean, I know that Rand Paul right. uh, is not even close to this <laughs> knuckle yet. You know, this uh, Chase Oliver guy. You know, I know that Rand Paul and Ron Paul, they're great men. I mean, just good men. And I know that they're not for, and they don't stand on these values that this Chase Oliver guy, you know, stands on. And so going back, Reed, to many, many years ago, you know, whenever I began to get involved in a political landscape, you know, I began to get involved in what I like to call the political arena. I remember looking at all of the different platforms, right? I mean, I, was stu I studied these platforms. I wanted to see, okay, where do I line up, you know, as far as my ideas, you know, my ideology, you know, my convictions, you know, where do I stand? And so I looked at the Republican Party and I looked at the Democrat Party and I looked at the Libertarian Party. And there was some other different smaller parties out there, but those were the three big ones, you know, that I knew about. And of course, I looked at, you know, the Independent, you know, as well. And after reading all of the different parties, I came to this conclusion that, my beliefs and my core values lined up with the Republican Party. You know, the Republican Party, you know, those values I believe that I believe in, you know, they seem to be in that platform. When I looked at the Democrat Party, I thought to myself, there's no way that as a Christian that I can stand and I can vote Democrat because of what is in their platform. I cannot vote for any platform or any person that is for abortion. That's one reason why I came out really hard hitting Kennedy, because Kennedy came out pro-choice. And I don't see how any Christian can be pro-choice. I don't see how any Christian can not just be pro-choice, but I don't see how any Christian can even vote for a candidate that is pro-choice. And Kennedy is trying to run as an independent, which I think is good for us, because I do think that he's going to pull off some of that Joe Biden vote. I hope you're right. I, I think so. And because he is pro-choice and he's, he stands for a lot of things you know that the democrat party stands for and then i looked at the libertarian party and the libertarian party was you know pro-choice same-sex marriage and but they just can, what i'm getting to is this that the libertarian party and the democrat party just continues to keep going to the left i mean they just keep getting crazier i mean just crazier the idea that a presidential candidate for a party like the Libertarian Party, how many people voted Libertarian in the last election? You know off the top of your head? No, I don't know the exact number of votes, but they got about 3% of the vote overall. Was it maybe around 20 million? Like for some reason, like 24 million, some reason seems like a number. Maybe um, That's way too high. You think so? So you're yeah. saying 3%. They got 3% yeah, of the vote. 3%, yeah. And that, that's pretty consistent. They get between 2 to 5%. So uh, every, every 3%. Three percent. And the vast majority of those votes they siphon away come from Republicans. It's not even close. Yeah. Historically speaking, the only thing the Libertarian Party has done, either in presidential elections or other federal elections, is just steal votes from Republicans and put more Democrats in power. Yeah. And so so when you look at that three percent, how can and a lot of that three percent, like you just said, comes from the Republican Party. And even so, I know a lot of Christians that stand strong. And I go to church with with some, you know, who they're Libertarian. And I always ask, I mean, I ask them, and I debate them hard on this issue because I'm like, how can you, as a Christian, you know, stand for a party that is for killing babies? And this Chase Oliver guy, yes. you know, he, he, he takes it a step further, you know, whenever it comes to abortion. You know, he, he wanted gets, to codify Roe versus Wade. Yeah. I mean, and, and he wants to kill babies all the way up until right when the mother is about to give birth. Yep. I mean, there's just the only step is. We like they try to pass on one of the states is we're going to let the baby be born and then we're going to let the mom decide if we're going to let the baby die. 
I mean, that is outright murder. And I don't see how anybody could stand for that. I believe that's demonic. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and that goes back to worshiping, you know, um, satanic and it goes back to satanic rituals and, and worshiping the alligator whenever, you know, people would throw their children and feed them to the crocodiles. And I mean, just unbelievable. Or the Canaanite God of Moloch, right? Yeah. Without sacrifice. Yeah. yeah. And, and for the Libertarian Party to pick this guy, that shows me a couple of things. Number one, it shows me that the Libertarian Party is not serious. They are not a legitimate, serious repu- uh, uh, party. Because whenever you're going to pick somebody this wild and this crazy, what you're saying, you know, to a vast majority of, of your people is, we don't care what you think. Because I know a lot of Libertarians, they do believe that marriage is between a man and a woman. They do believe in and the sanctity of life. I know many of them, you know, and, and they say, well, Dan, we're just, we're just more liberty-minded. Well, I've got a question for you. How is killing babies liberty-minded? It's not. I mean, you are absolutely 100% taking the liberty away from a child, you know, from a baby. There's no liberty without life. Absolutely. absolutely. How is it liberty letting a grown man put on a pair of thong panties and put on there his, his, some skirt that he bought at Walmart and, and stuff his bra and get up and shake his, you know, hiney in front of a bunch of five-year-old little girls. How is that liberty? You know, that's not liberty, ladies and gentlemen. That's a mental disorder. That is 100% demonic. That is insane. That is, that is right there with being a pedophile. I mean, for any man to want to dress like that and shake... It, yeah, that it, is pedophilic. It, I would say that is. It, it will be, it's, it's unbelievable. And you guys, the, uh, the Libertarian Party... You have, uh, you have nominated a guy that is for that. Here's what I want to say to the libertarians that watch this. The Republican Party might not be everything that you want, but we're not for drag queens, and we're not for, doing, we're not for brainwashing our little children. We are for life, and I know that many of you libertarians are for life. I know that you are for the Second Amendment. I know that you stand strong on gun rights, many of you. I know that many of you are for closing the border. I know it as a whole... And your platform, you have an open border policy. But I know that there's a lot of libertarians that don't have that open door policy as far as a border is concerned. I want to invite you to come over to the Republican Party. I want to invite you, if for no other reason, just come and vote Donald Trump in November. Because he is going to be more close. I know that you libertarians, you men and women out there, you know, that are libertarians, I know that you and your your ideology and your convictions are not for grooming our little children. I know that you are not for dancing, a grown man dancing in women's clothing in front of our little children. I know that, uh, Reed, I know at one time you was, you know, a part of the Libertarian Party, and I know that you've never been for that. I mean, you've never been for this drag queen story hour. Right. You know, and so there's a lot of Libertarians out there that look up to you, you know, as being part of their party at one time and so what is your message that you give to the libertarian party after this nominee this past weekend uh well i mean it's pretty clear libertarians it's time to get serious a political prisoner of the ron paul revolution ross ulbricht is dying in a cell as we speak and he is on track to die there if we don't do something quickly luckily the president of the united states came and spoke at the libertarian national convention and gave a promise to free Ross Ulbricht if reelected. I'm going to tell you right now, this is our one and only chance. We might never get an opportunity like this to finally free Ross Ulbricht, who is being imprisoned in what is probably the most unjust case in United States history. I'm going to tell you right now, it does not matter. You can you don't need to change your party affiliation. You don't need to become a Republican. You don't need to enjoy voting for Donald Trump, but in November you need to get out there. You need to vote for Donald Trump. This is our one and only chance. If you want to bring Ross Ulbricht home, if you want to bring Julian Assange home, if you want to bring Edward Snowden home, if you want to get them back to their families, Donald J. Trump is your one and only choice this upcoming November. A vote for anybody else is an absolute disgrace. Do the right thing. Donald Trump is our one shot. And, and Reed, that was very well done. And going back to this immigration, you mentioned immigration, you know, how they say, well, we don't want people dying in, in 18-wheeler trailers. Well, don't break the law. Yeah. I mean, listen, I don't recommend robbing a bank. But if you go rob a bank, now there's a good possibility you're going to get shot. I don't recommend you come and rob in my house. If you do, there's a good chance that you potentially might get shot. Uh, 
I don't recommend breaking the law. You know, I recommend you obey the law. I had lunch today. I had lunch today with several Spanish speaking um, ladies and men, and we had a great lunch and we talked about Trump. And they are, we're starting a Republican club for Spanish speaking people here on the coast. And I can't wait. I'm helping them and we're writing the letter and we'll have the letter um, submitted to the Harrison County Executive Committee for June. And so we're putting together the bylaws, the president, the vice president, the secretary, the treasurer, the, the, the um, board members. We're working on all that right now. And it's been fun and it's been truly amazing. Matter of fact, Reed, I talked to Mr. J.R. He's the, one of the main leaders. And I asked him, I said, would you be willing to come on the God of Country show and talk about the Spanish speaking, you know, people here in America supporting, you know, Donald Trump? And he said, absolutely. He's a good Christian man. You know, and he moved to America. He, he, here's what he said to me. Here's what he said today at lunch. He, he said, I, I love, you know, where he lived. He said, I had a beautiful house, you know, right on the ocean, mountain in the backdrop, waterfall. And he said, but they, my country at that time, he said, he's an United States of America citizen. He came here legally. He said, I came to America because of liberty and because of safety. He said, and if we're not careful, we're going to lose that in America. He said, and most of the people that are coming over here, he said, what the Democrat Party doesn't understand is that a lot of these people are pro-life. They are pro-family. He said, we just have to get the message out, you know, because they don't know. I mean, they, a lot of these people don't speak English. They have no idea what all of the things that the Democrat Party stands for. And so that is one reason why we are kicking off this Spanish speaking Republican Party here on the coast is because we need to reach into that community. We need to reach into, you know, the Spanish community. And so whenever I hear people like Oliver and people like the Libertarian Party and the Democrat Party, you know, talking about, you know, immigration and how we just need we don't want people dying in the back of 18 wheelers. Well, who does? I mean, nobody wants people dying in the back of 18 wheelers. I don't want people breaking the law. You know, I want you to, I, I, listen, we've said this before, and I don't want to belabor this, but- I don't want this. my country being destroyed Absolutely. by mass immigration, you know? Absolutely. And how is, how is destroying America any more humane? Correct. Right. I agree. 100%. And I'm all about immigration. Like, I am for people coming to America. I've said this before. If I lived in another country, I'd be doing everything I could to get here. Uh, because this is the land of the, this is, this is the land of liberty, freedom. And this is where you can pursue happiness. And you don't have to worry about a lot of things that you have to worry about in other countries. And so I am all about immigration. I am 100% opposed to illegal immigration. I was speaking to a gentleman the other day. I, matter of fact, I was speaking and um, to a large group of teenagers. And there was this gentleman there who was, who was preaching as well. He pastors in Mexico City. He pastors in Mexico City. He is here right now in, in our nation, in our country. He's, a, he's an American citizen, but he's a missionary in Mexico City. Last week at his church, that's amazing. He had 59,000 people at his church last week. He's got one of the largest Baptist churches in the world. He had 59,000 people at his church. He had, I think he said there was 2,900 or something people um, that, um, that got baptized, you know, at his church. The year of COVID, when all the churches had to shut down, he was in Mexico. So they started having house churches. They had over 500 and something house churches every single week. They averaged over 50,000 people every single week in church. It's amazing. They baptized over 100,000 people in that year of COVID. They never shut down. They continued on. And here's one thing that, you know, that we need to get people to understand, especially in the Spanish speaking community, because whenever you sit down and talk to them, what you'll find out is that they're pro-life. You'll find out that they're anti-illegal immigration. I mean, these people that I had lunch with today, they're awesome people. They're all business owners, and they're very, very successful. They're like, we are 100% opposed to, uh, to people coming over here illegally. It's, it's just part of getting out our message. And, I, and that's what I think today is about. You know, it's about the message against the Libertarian Party, against this, against this Chase Oliver, and inviting Libertarians to come over to the Republican Party. Maybe not join. You know, hey, listen. You don't even have to join the Republican Party. Just I don't vote. care. I don't care what party they become yeah. a part of. Just I don't vote Donald they, Trump. Just vote Donald Trump. That's, That's right. all I care about. You know, Ronald Reagan uh, had a prediction that, that stuck with me ever since I read it many years ago. He said that. Uh, Hispanics are Republicans. They just don't know it yet, right? Absolutely. I think that's kind of that's what you're alluding to. Absolutely. Here. Right. Whenever we talk about these different political parties, there's this idea, at least this theory, 
that every political party has two wings. You know, we see it in the Republican Party, I think. There's the conservative wing of there the Republican is. Party, which includes me and you. There's the liberal wing of the Republican Party, which does not include me and you. It's like, it's like the, the Romneys and the John McCains and so on and so forth, right? They say that the Democratic Party still has two wings, but I don't think so. It seems to be all pretty much far left at this point. And the Libertarian Party, they have two wings, right? So there's the there's this this wing that's taken over the party and that I think is... Ever since the Libertarian Party was founded in the early 1970s, the Chase Oliver wing has really been you know, at the steering wheel for almost its entire history. I don't think there's any any reason to go to the Libertarian Party because it's just a left-wing party. Historically, it has been, and now maybe the worst it's ever been, right? But there have been these, these conservative libertarians over the last several years who have tried to turn it into a more conservative party. Last week, whenever you and I were talking, I told you that I'm pretty I'm pretty pessimistic about a lot of things in this country. My optimism went up this past weekend because I saw Donald Trump go to the Libertarian National Convention, which is not something that a lot of nominees from other political parties would have been brave enough to do. He went there and he told them the truth. He said, you can vote for me, you can free Raw Soul Brichter, you can keep your 3% every four years. It's totally up to you. Here's why I'm optimistic about it. Here's why I'm just I'm ecstatic about this. Because I think we have a very real opportunity to take all those libertarians who are disgruntled with the Chase Olivers in their party, who are disgruntled with, with the leftists and the neocons running their party into the ground, finally bring them into the Republican Party, which is where they have belonged this entire time. I've said it for years. I've come under attack for it for years now. But between the, the MAGA movement, the Trump movement, and the Ron Paul revolution, there's a natural alliance. It's been a natural alliance this whole time. The Ron Paul crowd, the people like me, and, and the MAGA crowd, we, we should have been allies years and years ago. We would have been tremendous. We would have been a force to be reckoned with had, had we worked together. Because the people who flocked to Ron Paul back in 2008 and 2012, they followed him for almost all the same reasons that people went to Donald Trump. And I'm both pro-Trump and pro-Ron Paul. I'm, I guess you could call me like a hybrid of both of those things, right? But I finally see a, an alliance being built here between the conservative half of the libertarians uh, and, and the greater MAGA movement, right? And you might say, well, why do we care about what half of libertarians, whether they come to us or not? Look at, look at the elections. That's right. Look at who the Good spoilers point. are. Look yep. at who the spoilers are. I really believe that whenever it comes down to it, this half of libertarians that we can win over now, this could be a very significant voting block, not just in this, but in future elections. So... Just like just like what Dan Carr just just said here, it doesn't matter how you identify politically. It doesn't matter your political party. All that matters is that in November this up, this upcoming year, you go and you vote. And you cast that vote for Donald Trump, even if you have to hold your nose to do it, even if you have to lie to everybody and tell them that you didn't vote for Donald Trump because you're so ashamed of whatever public criticism could come from voting for Donald Trump. If you want to free Ross Ulbricht. If you want to free Julian Assange, if you want to bring Edward Snowden back home, if you want anything close to a country in four years, in eight years, Donald Trump is your one and only option. A vote for anybody else is a vote against liberty. You know, we're talking about the Libertarian Party, and I was reading something here about the Libertarian Party. And back in 2016, uh, according to this, the Libertarian candidate and he got 1.2% of the vote. And so, but in 2000, and, no, 2016, they got 3.3% of the vote. Uh, Gary, Are you talking about Gary Johnson? Gary Johnson. Okay. He got 3.3% of the vote. And then in 2020, the Libertarian Party candidate, Joe Jorgensen, he only got 1.2% of the vote. And so he, he stayed That's at she. home. Joe oh, Jorgensen's she. a lady. Oh, my bad, yeah. my bad. That's, okay. That shows how much I know about the Libertarian Party. <laughs> and so, but I know, that, uh, I know that Gary Johnson's a guy. Right, yeah, he's yeah, he's not. I'm, I'm pretty it. sure. Yeah, okay, good, good. But here's something else that was interesting, and um, that I want to point out about the Libertarian Party, is that in America, um, there are 20 polls on the topic spanning over the last 13 years. Okay, and they're between 17 to 23, 17 to 23 percent of the American electorate identify as a Libertarian. That's insane. That's a lot of people. And so that goes back to your point a while ago. If you can take those 3.3%, you know, of of that base that votes Libertarian, 
And if we can just get 2% of them to come over to, you know, and vote Donald Trump. But if you can get a lot of the 17 to 23% to come out and to vote for Donald Trump, yep. the election's over. It's over. We win. Landslide. I don't know if we're going to have a night. I do believe Donald Trump's going to win. I don't believe it's going to be like 1984. But what I do believe is that we're going to win. I think we're going to win a lot of states. And especially if we can get a lot of the Libertarian Party to come over and to vote Donald Trump. Because Chase Oliver, I mean, he is not the guy. No. I mean, listen, I, I'm, 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 I am glad that that's who the Libertarian Party picked because it really shows who they are. And now maybe a lot of the Libertarian Party will come over, you know, and vote for Donald Trump in 2024. So I, I'm, I'm glad about that. But at the same time, I'm very disappointed that a party such as them, I mean, he's no worse than Joe Biden. At least he'll get up and say, you know, that he's for this and he's for that. Joe Biden just doesn't, right? I mean, he's not doing anything to stop the border. He's not doing anything to stop these men from dressing up like drag queens and going into, in, into our libraries and dancing in front of five-year-old little girls. Joe Biden's not doing anything to stop any of that. And so if we can get a large number of these libertarians to come over, especially a lot of these that are Christian, because a lot of libertarians that I know are Christian, and now they can see what this libertarian party is all about, you know, with this Chase Oliver. Come over and vote for Donald Trump. You know, and Donald Trump's not perfect, right? I mean, Donald Trump has his flaws. But, Reed, let's just be honest here. I've got my flaws, right? Correct. I mean, I'm a sinner saved by the grace of God, and I'm thankful for, I'm thankful for what Jesus has done in my life. You know, I'll read Paul the Apostle, and Paul talks about all the time how he was the chief of sinners. I mean, he said he was the chief, and Paul was a great man. He wrote many books in the New Testament. You go over to Romans chapter number 7, and you read in Romans chapter number 7, and Paul wrote this, and Paul says, the things that I know that I should do, I don't do. The things that I know that I shouldn't do, I do. What Paul was saying was this, that that's my flesh, and in my flesh dwell of no good thing. So is President Trump perfect? He's not perfect. But I believe this, that for 2024, I believe that he's the perfect candidate. I believe that he's the one that we need. I believe that he is the man for the job. And so we're, we're talking today about the libertarians and about Chase Oliver and how the libertarians that you are disgusted with this pick, you know, of Chase Oliver, we want to invite you to come over and vote in November for Donald Trump. Amen. Beautifully put. When you talk about grooming children, our children, you know, they are the next generation, right? I mean, they are. Uh, I think about my children. I have five children. And someone asked me, you know, uh, what can we do for the next generation? Well, I believe that one of the main things that we can do for the next generation is make sure that our message lives. We have to make sure. I mean, there are people out there that want to silence us. There are people that want to, they want to mute us. They want to try to embarrass us. They want to try to act like our message doesn't matter. But ladies and gentlemen, it is important that you and I do all that we can. One of my good friends, Chris McDaniel, he was running for office uh, last year. And one thing that he talked about and he talked about often was he talked about the message, the message of liberty living on. And he would say something like this. He would say, even if I lose, it is important that the message of liberty lives on. And Reed, I can agree with that. Even if I never run for office, even if I never win an election, we need to make sure that our message lives. The message of life and the message of liberty and the message of pursuit of happiness, we need to make sure that it lives and that there's someone that is preaching out and someone that is talking and giving speeches to try to reach out to that next generation. Read this past weekend, we celebrated, and I don't like to use that word, celebrated, but we acknowledged Memorial Day. And on Memorial Day, we were thinking about the men and women who gave their lives at Iwo Jima. We were thinking about the men and women who gave their lives in Germany and who gave their lives in the Middle East, who gave their lives right here in our nation so that we could be free. It's important that their message lives on. One of the greatest sins that I believe is in the Bible, whenever you look at the nation of Israel, was this, that there was a generation that knew not God. And the reason why that generation knew not God was because their moms and their dads, they failed. They failed. The reason why they had those 12 stones on the side of the Jordan River, you know why they were there? So that way it could be a memorial. So that way they can remember what God did for them. 
That's why God told him to write it upon that, thy arm and, and put it there and put it for a frontless between thine eyes and write it on paper and, and, and talk about it to the next generation so that way your children will not forget about their God. Looks like you've been sleeping well. Megan, he's back. The my pillow guy. And you're looking good. I'm still feeling good. Well, just when you thought it couldn't get any better, we've got the best pillow ever. My pillow 2.0. <gasps> wow, it's so soft and smooth. It's cool to the touch. How did you do that? Well, we took my pillow's patented bill and combined it with this new technology that we didn't have back then when I invented my pillow to bring you the best pillow in history, MyPillow 2.0. Just like all of you, I never imagined that MyPillow could get any better. That's why I haven't changed it in nearly 20 years. Then I heard about a revolutionary new technology and I knew I had to bring it to you all. MyPillow 2.0 is truly the next generation of MyPillow. The MyPillow 2.0 is cooler and softer than the last MyPillow. It is so comfortable to sleep on at night. I look forward to going to bed and I wake up well rested in the morning. Sleep is all about temperature and height. MyPillow 2.0's patented adjustable fill is gonna give you the exact individual support you need from your head to your bed. And now here's where it gets even better. We've all experienced those temperature related sleep interruptions where you get too hot, you toss and turn, you flip your pillow over to the cool side, well, all that's gone with my brand new MyPillow 2.0 cooling fabric that's made with temperature regulating thread. The best sleep just got even better. Whether you have a MyPillow or not, you need to get the brand new MyPillow 2.0. Call or go to MyPillow.com now. Use your promo code and for a limited time when you buy one, you'll get a second one absolutely free. You're sleeping even better. And cooler too. And you're looking good. Feeling good. I knew you would. Visit mypillow.com. And that nation turned to evil idols, and they turned and worshipped all kind of different forms of of gods, and and they they went into idolatry, and I mean they just went into all kind of crazy things. And the reason, Reed, was because they didn't know God. And it is so important that we as liberty fighters and that we as Christians that we make sure that our children grow up and they know the message. They know the message of George Washington. They know the message of Abraham Lincoln. They know the message of Thomas Jefferson. They know the message of Ron Pauls. They know the message that, that they know about Paul the Apostle and David and Timothy. And, and they know this message. It is so important. And I say this all the time, and I will continue to preach it from the rooftop. Uh, Reed, it's important that we teach our children the importance of voting. The importance of voting. The importance of not just voting, but getting out the vote. Now, let's circle back, you know, to this Oliver character for the Libertarian Party. God has his people. He has his people. Uh, are we Christians. He has the Christian people. And the Christian people, we need to be getting out our message. Correct? Listen, whether you like what I'm about to say or not, sometimes I hate to use this terminology, but I don't care because it's truth. Just like God has his people getting out his message, Satan also has his people getting out his message. And what is Satan's message? Satan's message, he wants to corrupt the minds of our youth. He wants to corrupt these five and six-year-old little girls and these five and six-year-old little boys. That is why we fight so hard to keep that perversion out of these schools. When you read some of these books at fifth and sixth grade, you know, it talks about, you know, uh, it, it talks about some very wicked things, some things that read that if I was to even talk about now, I would probably get read and embarrassed uh, because we have a lady sitting in an earshot of what I'm talking about. And and so I, I would get embarrassed. But we have some of these in some of our school libraries. Who would allow that? That is a work of Satan. Who would allow these drag queens to get up and these men? Listen, listen, guys, if you're into that kind of stuff, look, you do what you want, right? I mean, if you want to go and, and dress like a woman, and if you want to go and do all of that stuff and put on lipstick and and wear whatever you want to wear, put on high heels. And, and look, whatever, if, listen, if you want to do that kind of perversion and be a part of all that, then go for it. It's wrong. It's but what wrong. happens among consenting adults is, is not really my business. Correct, but leave our children alone. Those five and six-year-old innocent little children, leave them alone. But that is Satan's message, right? You talked about it a couple of weeks back. That is Satan's message. He is after 
those children. He wants to corrupt them. He wants to corrupt them mentally. He wants to destroy them. He wants to destroy their innocence. And so that's why I'm willing to get on God and country. That's why I'm willing to talk about these type of things. Why? Because of the next generation and how important it is that we get out our message. The message of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So the message of, that's not normal, right? I mean, it is not normal for a grown man to want to do those type of things. It is not normal to want to murder the baby inside of a mother's womb. That is not normal. It, it, it's, it's not normal to want to just let people flood our country and we not even know who they are. That's not normal. I mean, that is wicked. That is perversion. You know, whenever you look at these type of things, what, what they're allowing, and I get so disgusted whenever I start talking about some of these things, but it gets back to, and I got to come back to the point of this, this episode, is we can't have 700,000 or 2 million or 3% of the population go vote for this Chase Oliver guy. We need to send a strong message that we're not going to tolerate that mess. We need to send a strong message to Joe Biden that we're not going to tolerate his mess either. And we got to get every single Christian out to vote. Reed, I just went on a long rant, so I'm going to shut up. I'm I'm going to shut up for a few minutes and let you respond to all that. Uh, well, uh, you covered uh, quite a bit there, but uh, you know, you're know you exactly correct. I think that you just inadvertently uh, wrote the Midnight Rides mission statement for us. Uh, everything you said, uh, preserving the ideas of life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness, uh, carrying that on to the next generation so that they understand that, so that they know that it exists, so that they know that those are the ideas on which our forefathers died for them to have. Uh, that's the entire reason the Midnight Ride was founded. That's the entire reason why God and country exist. That's the entire reason... Um, it's the entire reason why we're here. Absolutely. Let's get into a few things on why Trump. I've got several things written down, and I don't want to bring up this one thing first, and it's the idea of America first. I want to talk about that for for a moment because someone asked me the other day, here's a question they asked me, and and they sent it to me in an email. They said, Dan, you're a Christian. You're a pastor of a church. You're involved in the political landscape. landscape. You're the chief of staff for Commissioner Wayne Carr. I mean, you're heavily engaged and heavily involved in the political world, the political arena, you're heavily involved in it, in the church world. I mean, you're heavily involved in all these things. How come you as a Christian, looking at the Bible, had the attitude of America first? Shouldn't it be America last and not America first? And I explained it to him like this. I said, listen, I pastor a church, right? We, I do. I pastor a church. We're a small church. I love my church. I, I, I love church. I, re- I love going to church. I love the people that I go to church with. We support 50 missionaries. We're a small church, but we support 50 missionaries. A lot of the, a lot of the money that comes in our church, we send out across the world to 50, 50 different missionaries in a lot of different countries. Our goal is 100 missionaries. Our goal is $10,000 a month going out to 100 different missionaries. My long-term goal as a pastor is a missionary in every single country. And we have missionaries in some countries where they're not even allowed. But let me get back to America first. But I have to take care of our church. If I take every single penny that comes into our church and I ship it overseas, our church can't survive. It is the mission of God's people to be ambassadors. It is the mission of the church to get the gospel out. That is the mission. But if I send every single dollar to missionaries that come in, we're going to get a light bill in the mail and we can't pay the light bill. We're going to get a water bill in the mail. We can't pay the water bill. So I have to be church first. I have to be, as a pastor, I have to be community Baptist church first. We have to pay our bills here first. Once we pay our bills here as a church, now we can support missionaries. Okay, now let's come back to my home. My home, I give to charity. I even give to my church. I give to people. But I have to take care of my home first, correct? I have to pay my light bill. I have to pay my electric bill, my my uh, my le- light bill. Matter of fact, it's due. I got a text message today that it is due today, and so I need to pay it. You know, hopefully, Coast Electric doesn't turn it off, and uh, before I go pay it, but I got to pay my light bill. I've got to buy groceries for my family. Listen, is it great for me to go spend my whole paycheck on food for other people? That would be wonderful, and then let my children starve. I can't do that. I have to be family first. Family first. So when you look at America first, we've got to take care of America first. We have to take care of our nation first. And we've got to, we got to start right here at home. We've got to take care of our military. We've got to take care of them first. 
Uh, we got to be America first. We have veterans that live on the street and we're going to send $90 million to Iraq. We're going to send trillions of dollars to Iran, who's burning American flags in the street, chanting death to America. We're going to send them money. It, it, that's unbelievable. They should never get a penny. They should never get a dollar of our money ever, ever of any of our money. We have to be America first. Now, listen, I'll, but I'll even probably I'll make a very controversial uh, statement here. Uh, I don't think we are to be sending any of our tax dollars overseas, the, uh, except to one nation, you know, and that would be the nation of Israel. You know, and that is let's send them. Let's not send them. I don't want to send them boots on the ground, but I, I, I would be for sending them uh, mil, uh, um, uh, guns and planes and ammo and missiles and stuff like that. I, I would be for that. If you want to send money to another country, start a GoFundMe. You know, and 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 send and and there's nothing stopping you from starting a private charity. Absolutely, and send all the money you want to Iran. But our tax dollars should not be going to Iran, right? Our tax dollars should not be going to North Korea. Our tax dollars should not be going to none of those places. It should not be studying rats. It sh should not be studying, you Shrimp know, on a treadmill. Yeah. Remember that one? Yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable how much money is wasted, wasted that could be put right back into our economy by letting you and I keep our money. I can spend my money a whole lot better than they can in D.C., and that's a fact. But my point is, we have to be America first. Donald Trump is America first. Joe Biden is not America first. This Oliver guy, if he is for killing babies, that's not America first. If he's for grooming our children, that's not America first. If he's for open borders, let people just flood in, he's not America that's first. That's the least America first position you can possibly have on the issue of immigration. Absolutely. You know, that's, I mean, just let people come flood into our country— millions of people, we don't even know who they are. I mean, they could be terrorists. And this comes, uh, you know, not just months after Lake and Riley was brutally murdered uh, by an illegal immigrant on the UGA campus. Just last week, just last week, I read a story about a an underage girl who was brutally murdered by an illegal immigrant in Virginia. Every state is a border state at this point because our, our migration crisis, our illegal immigrant crisis has gotten so bad. I can't even go one week without reading a headline about some illegal immigrant male killing some American female. In very many cases, it's underage. And this lunatic, Chase Oliver, and his little lunatic party want to just let that happen with impunity. Oh, we're not compassionate unless we're letting little girls get beaten and brutalized in all sorts of ways by illegal immigrant criminals coming over our border. I can tell you, if they don't respect the laws of this country, they're not going to respect your property rights. That's they're right. not going to respect your liberty. They're not going to respect your life. That's right. And Donald Trump is America first. And I was going to go into the second thing, and you just walk right into it beautifully, but the strong stance on immigration. You know, Donald Trump, Donald Trump is not against immigration. Donald Trump is against illegal immigration. Same with us. You know, we are four people coming over here. We just want to know who they are. We want to know if they're terrorists or not. Uh, we want we want to know. You know, if you're if you're if you're raping people over in Mexico or in some other country, we don't want you coming to America. You're to be in jail. You're to be in prison. You know, if you if you can't even I don't even want to get into all that, but it's just mind boggling, mind boggling. You know that this Chase Oliver and Joe Biden, who was they are to be running together. You know, as far as you know, talking about parties, they're to be running together. Well, the Libertarian Party, whenever it comes down to it. They're nothing but the useful idiots for the Democratic Party right. at this point. They're basically just another wing, an extension, a weapon of the Democratic Party to keep Republicans out of office. Absolutely. And so his strong stance on immigration is another reason. Another reason why I'm supporting Trump. It's It just makes sense to me. Like, I don't understand how that's so hard to understand. Like, really. Like, how can anyone, anyone be for open borders? Like, a nation without borders will cease to be a nation. I mean, that's just common sense to me. Matter of fact, you try to go to Mexico. Uh, try to go to Mexico. Try to go to Iraq. You know, try to go to Israel. They're going to ask you a hundred questions. Why are you coming here? Better yet, try going to Mexico and demanding that the Mexican government give you free housing or, or give you free food or feed and house and shelter you, know, you, you and your family, right? See how well that's going to go. See how well the Mexican government, for example, is going to treat you for that. But that's how these illeg illegal immigrants are acting once they come here. They get all these subsidies. They get all these government programs. And I I'll never forget this. Just last week, I was watching another interview. This was with one of the one of the illegal immigrants being housed in Albany, New York. And she was complaining 
that the place where she was being housed on taxpayer dollars, it was too cramped. There were too many migrants there. Like, you think I'm going to go into Mexico illegally, right? Demand, demand shelter, demand food, demand my family be taken care of, and then complain about what they give me? Wow. Demand to be taken better care of than their own people are. You'll find yourself in jail yeah. if you try that in Mexico. And I'm pretty sure that the jail in Mexico's uh, in Mexico aren't that, aren't that pleasant. <laughs> not going to be anything like the jail that that are here here in America. I mean, it's just it's once again, it's just one of those things that blows my mind that anyone can be for open borders. It blows my mind that anyone in their right mind can be for uh, these grown men dressing like women and dancing in front of our children. It blows my mind how anyone, especially Christian people, can be for killing innocent babies. And Donald Trump, he appointed three of those people on the Supreme Court that shot down that overturned Roe versus Wade. Oliver, he is he he would be for making it legal. He is the enemy. Absolutely. Joe Biden is for making it legal, you know, killing babies. And so and but the reason why it has stopped is because of Donald Trump. You know, it's, it's because of him. So America first and his uh, strong stance on immigration. And then we just talked about his judicial appointments. I mean, those are important. People don't realize just how many law, uh, judges that they get to appoint, how many attorneys that they get to appoint. I mean, they get to appoint people all over. It's not just it the Supreme Court justices, but it's federal justices on other levels. Most right. people don't know that. Yeah, and attorneys. And uh, the president gets to appoint the U.S. attorneys and, and different states. And, and so, matter of fact, our new uh, chairman for the Republican Party here in Mississippi was an appointed, was an appointee by Donald Trump you know, as in a U.S. attorney here in Mississippi. And so, I mean, it's important, you know, wherever you look at the president and how many people he gets to appoint and then all of his cabinet, you know, his cabinet appointees. And I mean, j there's just so much that goes into, you know, everything that the president gets to do that most people don't understand. And that's why you need to be informed. That's why you better know his policies. You better know the policies of Joe Biden. You better know the policies of Chase Oliver. You better know the policies of Donald Trump. There was men and women who were willing to die for that we could go and vote. And then for you and I to just walk into a voting booth and vote for a person and not even know where they stand, and especially as a Christian, and you're going to cast your vote for someone that's for abortion, uh, you need to get right with God. Uh, I, I question, I, I, don't, I don't like to question people's salvation, but I'm going to question anybody's salvation who is for or who is voting for people who's for pro-choice. I just don't understand that at all. And so... That, that's important. Another thing, Reed, whenever you look at um, deregulation, uh, you look at so many things here in our nation. You know, these red, you talked about red flag laws a while ago, but these, uh, these, red, these uh, the red tape, you know, whether you're trying to start a business, whether you're trying to build a house, whether you're trying to get a company going. I mean, there's so much red tape. You know, it you almost have to have a degree, you know, just to start a business. You have to have a degree just to fill out the tax paperwork. I mean, I did like, uh, was it Rand Paul that said, or uh, maybe Rand, Rand Paul or even Ted Cruz said that you should better fill out your taxes on one piece of paper. You know, you should better fill it out and send it off and, and it would be, and it, and it should be fine. In a perfect world, man. Yeah. No, it, it has to be a complicated tax code. Absolutely. Well connected, the political elites can, can continue to rig it, right? Absolutely. But yeah, whenever it comes to scaling back environmental regulations in particular, uh, Trump was absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, Trump is by far... Uh, the greatest president, uh, I think, of the last half century whenever it comes to, to cutting back regulations. I can tell you the EPA, uh, they don't think very high, highly of Trump. I don't think a whole lot of EPA employees uh, are going to be voting for Donald Trump in this upcoming election. Uh, but uh, to me, that's a good thing. Maybe we'll make up for it with enough, uh, you know, uh, conservative-leaning libertarian votes, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And we welcome them. We welcome you to come over 2024 November. Come over and vote. I promise you, the roof ain't going to fall in. It's not going to fall in on you. A lightning bolt's not going to hit you. Matter of fact, nobody will even know. Just come in there, vote for Donald Trump, leave out, come January, and then just start watching what happens. And if they do want to join the Republican Party, I'm not going to be against that either, because let's face it, a little bit more of the right kind of libertarian influence in the Republican Party might not be such a horrible thing. I agree. And if you want to join the Republican Party, especially here in Mississippi or in Louisiana, I can help you. And I can connect you to the right people. You know, this, so you can join you know, the party that is for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, the party that stands and fights for the unborn, the party that stands and fights for our children, our three, four, and five-year-old little boys and little girls, that is the Republican Party. You know, the party that stands up and fights for small business and fights for the business owner, the, 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 the party 
that fight for marriage, uh, that party uh, is the Republican Party. And it's not the Libertarian Party. It's dead sure not the Democrat Party, but it is the Republican Party. And I want to encourage you, every one of you, come over and join. The water is fine. Yep, the water is fine. I uh, get out of the party of drugs and drag already. Uh, it's it's over with. It's done. There's no hope there. I will say, whenever it comes to engaging the political arena, there is something that they cannot be missed here, and that's the fact that historically the Libertarian Party has stolen mu- many, many more votes from Republicans than from Democrats. So the fact that Chase Oliver is so far left, the fact that he's further left than Joe Biden. That does not mean that we can assume that Chase Oliver is going to steal votes votes from Joe Biden, because historically that is not the case. I believe that we are at, we're in serious danger here, Dan, uh, given the fact that most libertarian voters, like all other kinds of voters, are uninformed. Right? They're going to get out there and they're going to, like I said, if we're not careful, careful if we don't let them know that Chase Oliver is a far leftist and he's nowhere near your values. They're going to vote for Chase Oliver. They're going to steal those votes from Donald Trump. So we've really got to put a lot of effort into communicating to the electorate overall just how far left the Libertarian Party has gone. And if you are anywhere right of center, your only option is Donald Trump. Otherwise, I think that, you know, this this might not be for any good at all. Absolutely. You know, a while ago, you talked about the EPA. And I've got this on one of my lists. We don't, we're not going to have time to get to all of these today. But energy independence is important. You know, and you got the left, and they're pushing solar. And solar has its place. They're pushing wind, and wind has its place, but they're not reliable. If you look at the scale, you know, from 1 to 10, 10 being the most reliable, 1 not being reliable at all. And if you look at the scale, you put solar on the scale, and you say, how reliable is solar? It's not. It's not reliable. At nighttime, you have no solar. If there's a fire, and if it's... And if there's a if there's that smoke going, you have no solar. If it's cloudy, you're so I mean, you're, it's not reliable at all. And then you look at wind. How how reliable is wind? Well, if the wind's not blowing, you have no you have no wind. And it's horrible for wildlife. Absolutely. Is, well, so I mean, wind power is terrible for, for a lot of our birds, our migratory birds in particular, who are being hit by these windmills. It's all yeah. Wait till a bad gust of wind, like a tornado or something, comes through. Then, yeah. I mean, how good are your windmills going to be then? Absolutely. And, and that, those solar fields, we have an 1,800 solar field here in, in Mississippi, up around Jackson area. What about all those trees that they cut down? Yep. All those animals that were on that land displaced. that can't be used for anything else. Absolutely. Can't be used for farming. And I mean, there's just so much. So, so when you look at independence, whenever it comes to energy independence, solar and wind, it is not reliable. I mean, I work in the public service commissioner's office. And so, I mean, I'll watch the, you know, the scales daily about how much power is being produced by whether it's nuclear or coal or, or um, gas and then wind and solar. And wind and solar is always way down. And then at nighttime, solar's gone. There is no solar. And then when the wind ain't blowing, there's no wind. And so, but you have, you have some things that are reliable. I, I'm a nuclear guy. Now, I do think that Me in the too, future, too. I yeah. do think that in the future, there's going to be some room for hydrogen. And I'm not quite sure the the technology for hydrogen is not there. We're probably ten years or so away from that. And even being Elon more, Musk has said how stupid it is. That, that yeah. interests me a lot. Yeah, but I think I think that there is a place for 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 hydrogen. But I'm I love nuclear. I think nuclear is the future. Personally, now we're still some little bit of time away from nuclear as far as the technology for nuclear, as far as being more nuclear independent than than what we are right now. And so Joe Biden. What does he want to do? He wants to put more regulations on nuclear, more regulations on coal, more regulations on gas, and he wants to subsidize push. solar and wind, force it in our throat. Ask, and he wants you to pay for it. He wants you and I to pay for the subsidies for wind and solar. That's not reliable. That is not reliable. And so that's what people need to understand. Listen, if I'm traveling somewhere, when I get done, when we get done here in a little bit, I'm going to drive to Louisiana. And I don't want to get an electric car and drive to Louisiana. I want to get in a gas car. Now, hopefully my gas car can make it and it doesn't break down on me. But I'm going to get in a gas car and I'm going to drive, you know, to, to Louisiana. But my point is Joe Biden wants to shove wind and solar down our throats and make us pay for it. Not Donald Trump. Donald Trump is more, he's going to be more like us whenever it comes to being energy independent. Uh, Reed, we only have just a little bit more time left. And so I want to mention 
just two quick things, and, and we're gonna we're gonna be have to be done for today. But military strength and foreign policy they kind of run hand in hand. When your military is strong, uh, other nations would be good. I don't believe Russia. If Trump was president, I don't believe Russia would have ever invaded Ukraine. Correct. I believe if Trump was president, Hamas would have never went into Israel. I believe if Trump was president, there's a lot of things that have happened around the world that would have never happened. Donald Trump went to North Korea. He walked into North Korea and shook the president, the prime minister of North Korea, shook his hand in North Korea. Who would have ever thought that President Trump would have went into North Korea? Uh, I didn't have that in my bingo cards whenever Trump got elected. I wasn't... Probably wasn't the most surprising thing about Trump's presidency. I think we could spend a lot of time talking about what was the most surprising thing uh, about Trump's presidency. But to your point, um, I, I advocate what Ronald Reagan called peace through strength, right? Absolutely. That, that's my approach to Absolutely. thinking about uh, foreign policy. Um, I mean, the reason Hamas, you know, did what it did on October the 7th to a large extent, and the reason why Vladimir Putin went into Ukraine or felt like he, he could get away with doing so, is because they see that we have nothing but a drooling cadaver who can't even string together a sentence on his own, maybe without being injected with a bunch of pharmaceutical products, sitting in our White House. They say they see complete and total stupidity and weakness sitting in the White House. When, and whenever you have a drooling, incoherent, demented cadaver sitting in the Oval Office, you're inviting the rest of the world to act up. You're inviting the Vladimir Putins and the Hamases of the world to do whatever they want to do with impunity. So I agree with you. I think that uh, Donald Trump, if he were still in office, then the, the recent election was stolen from him. But if it hadn't been stolen from him, I don't think that we'd be looking at the real possibility of World War III today. Man, and if Chase Oliver, just say Chase Oliver became president. I don't even want to imagine. Listen, it would be not just, you would have armies. Mandatory drag queens in every public school. That's one thing you'd see. And you would have armies coming over our border. I mean, it would be it would be wide open, kind of like we do now, actually, in a yeah, sense, when, with mass migration. Unbelievable of what's happening, unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. If you are watching, you're watching. Maybe you're watching on YouTube. Maybe you're watching on X. Maybe you're watching on Rumble. Maybe you got the Substack, you know, email. I want to encourage you to share, 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 share. It helps us as far as getting out our conservative message, the message of life, the message of liberty, the message of the pursuit of happiness, the message that we have to defeat Joe Biden and his leftist agenda. We have to defeat Oliver and his leftist agenda. Listen, our nation is at a crossroads. I believe that this read is the most important election of our lifetime. And I know we say that many times, but this is the most important election. Listen, we cannot allow Joe Biden to win in November. We have to beat Joe Biden. We cannot allow Oliver to peel off these votes from the front from Donald Trump that helps and that enables Joe Biden to get back into office and to get back to the White House. We have got Christians, listen to me very carefully, conservatives, Republicans, those in the Libertarian Party that you claim to be a Christian, I am asking you, I am begging you to join us in November and help us defeat Oliver, help us defeat Biden, help us defeat this leftist woke agenda. We have to have you. We need you in order to defeat them. If not, drag queen hour is going to, it's going to become two hours. Uh, this, this, these people coming across the border, it's just going to ramp up even more. I mean, we're going to see more, we're going to lose more and more of our liberties. That's why we have to defeat Biden. We have to defeat Oliver. We have to, re we have to elect Donald Trump. Raid, any last closing arguments? Man, you nailed it. Uh, Nothing else. Dan, as always, it's a pleasure to be able to join you every week for God and Country. Thank you so much. God bless. Reed, thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, I hope and I pray that you will do as we've been encouraging you to do. And that is let's work. Let's put in the time. Of course, we must pray. Hopefully you'll join me in praying every single day, praying for our nation and praying that we can get the vote out. Christians, we've got to get the vote out. Republicans, we've got to get the vote out. Conservatives, We've got to get the vote out. Libertarians, those of you that are Christian, those of you that believe, maybe even you're not Christian, but you believe like we believe. You believe in the sanctity of life. You believe that the border should not be flooded. You with people coming across. You believe in a strong military. I want to encourage you as well to come over and vote with us. And let's defeat Joe. Let's defeat Oliver. 
and let's elect Donald Trump to be the 47th president of these United States of America. God bless you, and may God continue to bless our great nation. Hey guys, it's Reed here. I don't say this about a lot of people, but I have to say Mike Lindell is a real patriot, and we could not be more thankful to him and my pillow for sponsoring today's episode of God and Country. Remember, go to MyPillow.com and save huge on a great night of sleep by entering the promo code MIDNIGHTRIDE. Thanks.